All Ooh. right, so we have the phone lines open. I'm going to catch so much shit for this. I already know. <laughs> I'm going to catch so much shit for this. Gabe Hoffman, unmute yourself. All right, I'm unmuted. Hey, you're going to catch shit. I'm going to catch shit. <laughs> you're, you're in the business of catching shit. <laughs> How's it going? How are you doing? I'm doing all right. You know, every day above ground is a blessing, man. Look, we're not we're not buddies, we're not pals, and we never will be. True. But you know, we had some words in the past, and I thought it would make sense now that you've uh, you know you've left the you know uh, cat boy you know combine or whatever it is, cat boy <laughs> prison. That uh, you know we might uh, be able to have a little conversation publicly. Well, I'm fine with that, and I you know said that I wanted to open up the kill stream like the old days where anybody can call in. And um, we know you're – obviously, I'm anti-Zionist. I think that you know that already. Um, and we know that you're a major Zionist, right? Uh, and so we've had uh, pro-Zionists on the show before, though. So, you know, I can uh, I can have conversations with anybody, actually. So, Well, you know, most importantly, you know, good luck on your, on your journey and with your sobriety. That, that's the most important thing. Because, look, man, in life, there's so many things you can't control. That's the one thing that you can't control. And I think with a clearer mind, a lot of things are going to be more clear to you. And especially especially some of this stuff. I mean, look, the reason I, I took a few minutes out of my day about a month or so ago to email you about that stupid stuff, you know, Teddy Feaser was saying is I just said, you know what? I, I heard through the grapevine that Ethan Ralph is sober and uh, – if he's sober and he's of clear mind, I, I could I could email him and just, you know, spit out the truth and show the receipts and, you know, lo and behold, that's what happened. That did and happen. Sobriety that did just happen. makes you a different person, man. That did ha that did happen, and also that wasn't my fight too. So I was just like, whatever. Like I'm not getting involved in this. I got enough court cases and bullshit <laughs> as it is, and so it's like whatever. Um, so you know, I'm not taking. And again. I'm cool with, with RPG. I don't want to start any, any shit with him. So I know that you're not. So, you know, that's cool. But but I, I just want to say that publicly as well. But I understand. I mean, uh, something that, you know, I learned or just really opened my eyes about all this. And, and I think, look, Ethan, I think you, you understand this. If somebody was out there saying that, uh, you know, whatever you are, you know, people that are, you know, that are white and that are from the South were, uh, you know, the reason the country was going to hell, this, that, and the other thing, and they were just full of crap, you would be defending your own kind. There's nothing more important in life than who you are and what's in your DNA and, and who you grew up being. Well, um, you know, <laughs> I will say this. Um, I, I think that the, uh, Zionist influence over our politics is, a uh, is pernicious, uh, and has caused a great decline in the country, quite honestly. Um, I've said that openly. Um, I don't hate Jews though. Um, and I don't, um, you know, I don't use that. I don't use that type of rhetoric because I don't actually hate Jews, but, um, you know, I, I think that Zionist power and Zionist influence in our politics have, have undeniably been a, a negative for the country, in my opinion. Well, there's another time and another place. Uh, <laughs> yeah, right. Where... Yeah, that's another conversation. Yes, I understand. Yeah, look, you know, yeah. but, if, but, 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 but to keep it real, if you're up for having a serious conversation someday where we put it on the calendar, because I don't think, and, and look, I know you've had a long career on the internet and all that, but this is the thing. Nick Fuentes is scared of me. He hates me, and he's scared of me. He will not have a debate with a moderator, with me, a real moderator, okay? Nick Fuentes, you know, he, he, he'll talk to somebody like Destiny, who's not Jewish, and he's some internet guy, and he's not educated, and he's never achieved anything in life outside the internet. I'm not saying that to, you know, crap on him, but just because somebody's got a bunch of followers and they're an entertainer, doesn't mean that they're educated and that they have the facts on a specific issue. So it's it's like a boxer, you know, who comes up the ranks or, you know, when they get sort of, you know, tomato cans thrown at them, guys that they know their manager is soft and things like that. But 
Nick Fuentes has never had a debate with an actual legitimate Jewish person who has achieved things in the real world like I have who actually knows the facts, and he's afraid to. And that's just the God's honest truth. Well, I mean, first off, <laughs> even with the beef uh, that me and him have, I would like to see that. But uh, I think you're right. I think Halsey would be the closest. Uh, and Halsey, I mean, no offense to Halsey. That was kind of a, um, not really a fair fight. <laughs> that wasn't really a fair fight for old Halsey there. But, um, but yeah, I mean, uh, I, I don't really think that I've necessarily seen that from Nick. Uh, if somebody could cite it in chat, um, but I, no, I really haven't. Look, there's, there's no, I mean, uh, I'm not trying to beat my own drum, but these are just facts. There, there, there's nobody who, they're not, he's not in my league. I mean, I took down one of Hollywood's highest paid directors when nobody was making films like this and nobody was doing that. And I did that with my own dime. The biggest pedophile in Hollywood that anybody has ever exposed and ended their career. And it was me. I know how to do research. I know how to get facts. And, you know, look, um, that, that's something that, look, in, in sobriety and in reflection, I think what you're going to realize, Ethan, is that when you're, when you're with bad people, it's bad business. And, look, you were on the website of a guy who said he wanted to be Hitler 2, 3, and 4. That was your choice, and I hope that it's because of your sobriety that, look, you also realized he was a bad person. Well, I, I, yeah, I didn't leave because he said he was going to be Hitler two, three, and four. I mean, I took that as just ridiculousness, basically. Um, but, but that's not why I left. Um, but I mean, to me, to me, that type of rhetoric actually harms the anti-Zionist side, and I've said this before. Um, you're basically playing into Zionist hands <laughs> when you're out there hiling Hitler and you're, you know, saying you're going to be Hitler two, three, and four, and you're doing this and that. Um, I think that that actually just plays into your hands. I mean, that's what you would want somebody to say, right? I mean. Uh, oh, yeah. I mean, I, I think a ridiculous, you know, look, a ridiculous man child like Fuentes. I mean, look. I encourage him to do Holocaust denial. I think he should do as much Holocaust denial as possible. And you know why? Because it is one of the most documented events in world history. Look, it is what it is. And what you do, why do you follow a leader, Ethan? You follow somebody because you believe that they're telling the truth. Okay? So when you start out with something that is just so dumb that anybody with above a 90 IQ, anybody who's not already pre-decided they're going to be a hateful person and deny a genocide. Anybody like that, um, you know, he basically eliminates 90% of his potential audience by leading with Holocaust denial or no. by saying he's going to be Hitler 2, 3, and 4. So I'm like, hey, do it more, man. It makes you look stupid. Well, I don't do Holocaust denial. For one, I just don't. It doesn't um, affect me, really. I don't feel like, um, you know, I've talked about this before. I mean, I do feel like the Jews use the Holocaust as a drum, basically, um, to increase their power and to, like, silence critics of Zionist power. And it's always like, never forget, and when Holocaust Remembrance Day, and this and that. Well, there's been a lot of genocides in world history, Gabe. Uh, and Absolutely. In including in the, in the 20th century. Uh, and, you know, arguing about numbers and all that, I, I never thought that that was any, any worth in that, really. Uh, but arguing about the Holocaust being used... Um, basically as a political bludgeon uh, for for the benefit of Jewish power, basically, um, is something that, that really does happen. Well, I'll, just, I'll just point something out to you that you may not know. You know, Rumble is kind of like YouTube in 2017, 2018. Yeah. You see, Rumble wants to have advertisers. They have advertisers. And look, I'm not, I'm not pro more rules. I'm a conservative. I've, I've donated to Republicans. I've always voted for Republicans. I've never voted for a Democrat. I never will. Okay. But I'm pro honesty and I'm, I'm, I'm pro fairness. And, you know, Rumble does actually have a rule. It's, it's number five on their terms of service. It says that you may not post or transmit anything that's 
abusive, inciting violence, harassing, harmful, hateful, anti-Semitic, racist, or threatening. Yeah, but look, that's not why he got it. T- it wasn't even because no, it was anti-Semitic. Not. It was because it's because well, he literally yeah. calls for killing. I mean, you know, like it was like. But, uh, I don't know. I can pull up the quote again. We read it at the top of the show. It wasn't even because he said um, something anti-Semitic, though. It was because um, what was the quote? Hold on, let me read the quote just so I can get it get it right here. Oh, I got I got it in front of me. If you want. Well, I'm sure you probably do, but hold on. Uh, uh, it was uh, hold on. There's a super chat. Let's Dan see. Bigfoot sent three dollars. Set it up to be the first new era of blood sports debates. Gabe versus Adam. Yeah, I would love to see you debate Adam Green, actually. I think that would be great. Uh, I, Nick Fuentes won't do it, obviously. But but the quote, he got his video taken down. By the way, they didn't even delete his channel. They didn't delete that channel, and, and they didn't delete his other channel. Uh, they just took down his video, and the quote was, he said, because we're willing to die in a holy war, we'll make them die in a holy war. Now, that's an actionable threat of violence, really. I mean... Um, so, so you know, it may not be criminal, you know, but it's 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 getting there, right? Uh, and you know, I can understand why Rumble took that down, and I don't I don't have any problems with them taking that down. So, well, that's that, that's my point, though, Ethan, is that you got a company that has been writing this is our policy, and yet this guy has a channel, and there are other channels that. They just they just, you know, lead with anti-Semitic stuff all day, all night. It's their main, you know, thing. Now, Rumble's a smaller company. It's not like YouTube where, you know, they have algorithms and everything to figure out transcripts and every word that people are saying and use the algorithm to zap people. But Rumble knows it's got Fuentes and it's got a channel. So to your point, Jews have so much power that a guy like Fuentes was on a big company like YouTube from, you know, all the way till 2020, directing hate against Jews all the time, hundreds of thousands of subscribers. And, you know, the ADL would write a little article once in a while that would say, ooh, here are some bad people that are spewing anti-Semitism on YouTube. And, you know, the rules say they're not supposed to be. And nothing would happen. And that went on for years and years and years. That's, That's how much power Jews really have. All of these companies are evil. They want to make money, and they don't give a fuck about anything else. No, wait. Let me ask you this, though. Jews have a lot of power, okay? I mean, uh, have you ever seen APAC? Uh, have you ever seen uh, how all these politicians go and kneel at the wall and how Ron DeSantis literally signs bills in Israel about and, – and they're trying to out – you know, Jew each other, basically. Uh, and they, they're they the most pro-Zionist. I mean, why do you think that happens if, if there's no, like, great Zionist power in the country, right? Like, I mean. Well, you're opening up a whole can of worms there, and that might be something for a different time. But, I mean, <laughs> I mean, look, look, look. But you want to have an honest conversation. I got a few more minutes. Look, um, people of faith. Real faith in their real life, who who live their life that way, um, who are who are Christian or Catholic, Israel as a place is holy and important to them, and it's holy and important that they're able to freely and safely visit the holy sites of of Jesus and Mary and and all that other stuff. And do you think that's what's about that's something that they? That's something that they want to do in their life. They're just making their religious pilgrimages. They're not making not, nothing to do to do with politics and and paying fealty to uh, to Zionism, basically. Well, I mean, I'm, I'm being honest. You, there. you know that. Yeah, what's no, I'm being honest. Right? I mean, there's you know while they're there, there's people that there's people they meet and there's stuff that they do. But you know, Ethan, I'll, I'll just point this out. You know, um, I'm I'm a conservative and I'm against pretty much most foreign aid. Okay, but which one are you not against? Now, what about? Well, no, you got you got you got to define. Well, you got to define what what what's foreign aid. Foreign aid is when you give somebody a handout, right? You know, hey, here, here, take this, right? Yeah. But if you're buying something from somebody, or somebody is doing something for you, well, what have we bought from Israel besides like uh, three foreign wars that we didn't need? Um, you know what I mean? Like, uh, what what are we well, getting? We, Go ahead. Uh, okay. Well, um, so we give Israel about three and a half billion dollars a year, 
and you you look you can look this all up on your own. Um, about a billion and a half of it is related to Iron Dome. Yeah, and that's true. so Iron Dome, Iron Dome is America first. Well, I don't. I mean, uh, the Iron Dome is paid b for by America. Uh, I don't no, know it's, if no, I'm, it's not. Uh, no, it's you, not. You don't know how we. You don't know how we got into it. Well, tell me. So we okay. So America first is defending the country, right? Like from say a nuclear attack. Wouldn't you say? Um, Just as concept. As like a concept. That we ought to, Defending yeah, the country like, from a nuclear attack should be a high priority, I think. Yeah. Right. Okay. So, and we, since Ronald Reagan days in the 1980s, the United States has been spending tens of billions of dollars on Star Wars and trying to figure out a system where you could intercept a missile that would come from. They already you know, have a 5, space program people. that can shoot down nuclear missiles right now, by the way. But yeah, but go ahead. Mm -hmm. they, they don't. So they about do. ten years ago, <laughs> so ahead. it's just not—it's not accurate all the time. But they do absolutely well, have something like that. But it, yeah, it, it, it's not—it's not—it's not a real defense unless it's accurate. Well, they don't exactly advertise just how accurate it is uh, because they don't want people to know. But there's absolutely a program like that. But anyway, go ahead, go ahead. Go oh, ahead. We, we've been—we've been trying for a long time. It's a very hard thing to do. So, well, now, isn't it the same technology? That if somebody figures out how to shoot something that's coming, you know, a, a projectile that's coming from 20 miles away, 50 miles away, that's now, let me, the foundation of building okay, the house. For the Iron Dome and all that. But uh, what about the whole... So, so, but, but, I, but, so but Iron Dome, just to finish the thought real quick, sure. what Iron Dome was, was about 12 years ago, the U.S., like Israel was doing Iron Dome on its own. And the U.S. said... We like that technology, the United States. We like that technology that you're working on for yourself. We want to buy into it, and we want to have rights to it too. There is not a single other country on the face of the earth that we could go to and say, oh, we like that cutting-edge military technology that you're developing for yourselves. Tell you what, let, let us buy in. Let us co-develop it. We'll give you some funding. We also have iron. We also have Iron Dome uh, launchers for some of protect some of our overseas troops in some places. One, hey, one, one sec, one sec. As you ask, the thirty-three right. cent five dollars take I grabby we and buying it. All right, now I'll I'll reread that in a second. But um, it says U.S. Army couldn't use Iron Dome because Israel refused to give give over the keys. Is what this article says from Times of Israel. Um, now again, you know, I'm not an Iron Dome expert, but uh, I am uh, a little bit of an expert on the occupation of, of the Palestinian territories. Uh, and uh, what do you think about that that's been going on for about one, the last 70 so, years? So one, one final thing. Um, who was the most important terrorist that was killed uh, after Osama bin Laden? Since Osama bin Laden died, who's the most important terrorist the United States got? Uh, I don't know what Zara Wahari or something. I don't know the the number two guy from Al Qaeda, um, or the uh, or the fucker from Iraq that they killed. Maybe I don't remember. I, Iran, yeah. Iran. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Soleimani. So uh, go look it up. Um, it it so that that's kind of a hard thing to do because you know the reason we wanted to get him was he was responsible for planting a bunch of and his group. Uh, planning a bunch of IEDs, you know, those roadside devices when yes. we were in Iraq that killed and maimed hundreds, if not thousands of Americans. Now, you can debate well, whether we, we should have been in Iraq well, or say, not. That ain't the point. Right. You can't go just, it's not your country. It's, you know, we were in Iraq. That's Iran. And he was blowing up U.S. soldiers. You can't let somebody get away with that. Well, the thing is, we shouldn't have been in in Iraq, though, uh, and you know, if I was a Palestinian, I would probably want to, uh, I, you know, I'd be careful with what I say here on Rumble. Uh, but I don't blame Palestinians for being very bloodthirsty towards Israelis because you've been illegally occupying their land for like seventy years. Well, uh, you're you're conflating two completely well, I mean, different. It's issue. the issue. But What's the Iron Dome that, for? That, no, wait. What's the Iron Dome for? It's to stop Palestinians from shooting their little rockets into Israel. 
That's what it's for. And why would they want to shoot a rocket into Israel? Oh, it's because you've been occupying them for 70 fucking years, and you have no real plan to do anything other than to steal more of their land. And since Likud has basically taken over Israel the last 20 years, um, there is no two-state There's no two state option at all. It's nothing but steal more Palestinian land. It's nothing but kill more Palestinians. And and take American money and whatever, you can say Jewish money, whatever, and build this Iron Dome where they can't even get in any type of strike. Now, how is that fair? You know what I mean? Um, like, you have so, all so, the high so, okay. power. Wait, let me finish. Let me finish. You have all the high powered weaponry in the world, including American tanks and helicopters and this and that and the Iron Dome and this and that. And Palestinians got, like, you know, Scud rockets and shit firing in there and rocks to defend themselves. So how okay. is that fair? What's fair about what's going on over there? Okay. So when, when you said that, you know, what is it? When, when Trump said he wanted to get Soleimani, it took Israel about two years and about uh, a whole lot of money and, and, you know, intelligence and lives to figure out when was this Iranian general going to be in a different country, Iraq, where he wasn't supposed to be at a specific time, at a specific place where you could just drone strike him, which we did. That wasn't an easy thing, and there's no other country in the world that would do that for us. But to your question, um, on the Palestinian stuff, Ethan, did you know that Jews are prohibited from buying, owning land in uh, not only the Gaza Strip, but most of the West Bank, yet Palestinians are allowed to buy land in all the West Bank? Do you know how much of the West that? Bank they've already annexed and just taken away as settlers and kicked people out of their homes and East Jerusalem? I mean, I know a little bit about this issue, Gabe. Uh, and the West Bank has been shrinking over the last 20 or 30 years because you guys have been stealing Palestinian land like it's going out of style. Um, so, so you're wrong if you look at a map of the west bank you will see that the major the overwhelming majority of the land in the west bank jews are prohibited from buying or owning property that's a fact well but they just change what the areas. west bank like is areas. they just shrink the west bank though they annex parts they annex parts of the west bank and make it smaller and then it's like oh they yeah can't. they annex like <laughs> yeah they annex like yeah they annex like 10 percent, and then the other 90 percent is for palestinians where jews aren't allowed to uh, buy land or have homes. That's the fact. There's there's like maps and it's like area A, B, C, and you can look at it. It's real. Well, uh, you know, I I would just have to stick with my takes actually on on this on this issue. Uh, I think it's uh, I think it's a, an international disgrace actually how the Palestinians have been treated the past seventy years. Uh, it's an absolute joke that our politicians don't say shit about it. Uh, and the reason they don't say shit about it is because they're in the Zionist pocket. And, um, I mean, that's my view. Right, right. So when Israel was a country that was only eight miles wide, and that was in 1967, and there were six of its neighbors that had all their airplanes, you know, on the airfield, ready to attack, um, they already had uh, done an act of war, which was to close off uh, the, the Gulf to Israel's west, the Gulf of Aqaba, cutting off all its trade, which was under previous treaties, an act of war. I, and they were ready to pounce on Israel for yeah, I know all know, about the third that. time six, in six day 20 war years. And, all that. Yeah, I know all about and then, that. And then yeah, Israel, yeah. Said, Israel said, you know what, you're, you're like airplanes are like literally on the fields and we know about it. And we're going to surprise you and, you know, actually win. Um, because we can't they have did a, a sneak attack. It was wide. like a Pearl Harbor type attack, is what it, well, was. it was. Well, no, it was like stopping Pearl Harbor, <laughs> like right before they got there. It well, was like if you saw Pearl Harbor, if you saw the Japanese fleet a hundred miles away and they were coming right at you, and you got them first. That's what it was. Hold on, here's a super chat. Punished Farfour sent five dollars. The Balfour Declaration it. and its consequences have been a disaster no, for I mankind. No, I can't. I probably don't want to. Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> that's you, okay. you probably don't want to, but it was. An but if it's something Balfour. I do want to, you could just you, you could just read it to me. If it's something I do want to, but if uh, I don't, then but <laughs> you, you know, I would actually like to have a full debate with you with Adam Green, and actually, and I could debate this a little yeah. bit myself. But um, I did have a question here. Um, from from one of my friends it, and it's not about the palestinian stuff it's about uh it's a little bit about your movie you know you did bring down brian singer i'll give you credit there uh but brian singer's is jewish um and 
according to to what you've said publicly, you basically think that Epstein was framed, Mossad wasn't involved. I never said that. I, I never said that. You don't think Epstein, Epstein was framed? You don't think Epstein no, was in, Okay, all right, fair enough. You don't think I never Mas said anything like that. Okay, 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 okay. But he wasn't. You don't think he was a Mossad agent? Well, um, what I've said is that you know, look, there, there's a there's a zillion pictures of you know Epstein all over the place, um, and there there doesn't seem so. Here, here here's what people are running with, and and you, you could say whether you think it's 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 accurate or not. But he, here are the facts. Um, her so Ghislaine Maxwell's father, Robert Maxwell, um, was you know a, a Holocaust survivor, self-made guy. He was guy. a Mossad agent. I was getting there. He became a media <laughs> mogul. Go ahead. Go now, ahead. now look, but you got to define what that means, okay? Like, well, did he hear? Did he hear stuff because he was a newspaper guy, and did he tell Israel stuff? Yeah. Does that mean that he was like trained well, look, in like ops or things like that? No. Well, that's Those not. Not things. every agent is a fucking like killer that's gonna go out and and do stuff like that. The CIA has people that are just like. You know, journalists in foreign countries yeah, okay. and stuff like that. I mean, yeah, I don't necessarily mean that he was a, you know, an actual killer, but he was a Mossad okay, agent. Okay, but but not everybody knows, not everybody understands that distinction. Right. That's well, there is a distinction. Make. Yeah, that's true. I mean, <laughs> that's true. Um. So, so, Ghislaine Maxwell, by all accounts, was, you know, just a spoiled trust fund party girl in London. After her father died. After her father died, she moved to New York City, and when she was in New York City, she met with Jeffrey Epstein for the first time, and then, you know, became his, you know, paramour, lover, sex trafficking thing, whatever. So there's no evidence that, like, Ghislaine Maxwell ever, like, got any training from the Mossad, was ever involved with anything like that, ever had the capability for anything like that, because it was after her father died that she met Epstein. But what I mean, you think he never? What she had no contacts with Mossad before her father died, or she, she, was, she, she, she was like some twenty-something like trust fund party girl in London. Well, right. Well, you just said he, you don't have he, to be a trained like killer guy. to be a Mossad agent. You can just be passing no, along information. You can be collecting dirt on politicians so they do what they want you to do. I mean, and, there's a lot of different agents. No, right. But there's no evidence that in any way, shape, or form she was ever a a serious person a or b ever involved with her father as far as business or things like that um you know at all so you don't think that they were running a basically a blackmail operation for Mossad against powerful people around the world so that they would have dirt on them well there isn't any evidence of that i don't see any uh you know i mean, I look, mean there's stuff a lot of, gets... there's a lot of smoke there well, no, no, no. When you got receipts, things like, okay, there's a wire transfer that's sent from this person to that person. Because all the, these things, you know, when money gets moved around, there, there's always a trail. I'm not saying it can't come out and I won't be, you know, and, and that I'd have to say, well, yes, there's there's evidence that, that it was. But it, it's, it's, a, it's a, people are making a, a leap without having actual documentation is what I'm trying to say, at least as far as I can tell. Now, the, the sex trafficking, sex abuse, all that stuff is, is horrible, and it's bad enough in and of itself. It yeah. doesn't need to be, you know? Yeah, and I'm not, I'm not saying you're defending that or anything, but uh, but you have, to, you know, kind of shot down the whole Mossad connection um, and, like, you know, in a major way. And to I me, just said there wasn't any evidence for it because I explained what people are relying on. Well, I mean... There's, like I said, I mean, I don't have direct, you know, receipts on it, but it seems fairly likely that she was involved and Epstein was involved with Israeli intelligence. Uh, and I mean, yeah, what's your what's your evidence for that? Well, they were <laughs> first off, they had connections at the very top of society with every politician you could imagine. They flew them to private islands to have sex with little children um, and then. Epstein himself got a sweetheart deal after he got convicted, got caught fucking children, and still got out of that. Um, I mean, these are things that um, 
at least raise a question. No, I don't have a direct receipt that Mossad, you know, paid them or anything like that. But uh, it's it seems pretty likely. So you don't have any. Mossad you don't have any evidence. Have. You have speculation. You don't have evidence. So, uh, Ethan, what if I told? So you've never watched my film. I can tell. No, I haven't. Well, maybe you ought to. So uh, well, I'm going to give you. I'm going to give you a, a spoiler. Okay. It's one of three, one of the three dramatic reveals. Um, so there's a, you know, one of the, uh, you know, young folks we, we profile when he was between 11 and 13. Um, he was, he was basically constantly raped by his pedophile, um, acting manager. Okay. And he, he actually recorded him on, you know, uh, on audio tape admitting that he did it. He got charged with eight felonies in the state of California raping an 11 to 13 year old child repeatedly he was not a rich person and not a famous person he pled guilty to four counts now, how much time you think he got in, how now so he pled guilty to four felonies how much time you think he got in jail and cali uh probably like 12 years six fucking months <laughs> That's uh pretty insane. And actually. you think and you think Jeffrey Epstein was special? Yeah, I do. <laughs> I do. And also, how did Jeffrey the, Epstein how did more the than tape? As much? How did the tape I'm of just his saying, suicide think, think, just get mixed up? And they lost that. I'm, I'm, and, and the guards I'm, I'm are asleep. Saying, like these are the types of things that surround intelligence intelligence agency ops. You understand what I mean? Like um, okay, these just mysterious you, you happenings. Just, but go ahead, go ahead. You just told you just tried to tell me that Jeffrey Epstein got off easy, and I just blew that out of the fucking water, didn't I? Well, no, not really. Um, I mean, you gave me one anecdotal example. If I mean, you, I could go I, and look could, up some could, cases could, where people have gotten I, I a could, lot longer. I could, I could give you um, a guy at Dalton Report, D A L T O N Report, R E P O R T. He's been a friend of an open secret Twitter since 2019. He's a teacher. And he's compiled a list of probably 500 different pedophiles um, in the United States, pled guilty, found guilty, what have you, of sexual abuse of children, all different types, all different ages. Some of them get only probation. Some of them never even go to jail. Epstein had been to Happens. jail for this before. He had already. I, I, I'm, I'm just. You know what I mean? But I'm, I'm saying. And you're, and Epstein only went for 13 months the first time, and he should have been locked up and never gotten out. Yeah, I, I don't, I don't disagree with that. I'm just saying that getting 13 months on a first offense, but but for, not only for, for, for Jeffrey Epstein is not anything special. But in not America, only did he get out, though, he went right back to the upper echelons of society, and started hobnobbing and started doing his same shit that he was doing before. And how does that happen? You know what I mean? Like, uh, how, that's usually you're a pariah uh, if you get convicted for something like that. Instead, he went right back to high society. They went right back to flying their politicians around and hanging out with Bill Clinton and hanging out with Trump, quite frankly, and other people like that. Um, I mean, this is just it just. Well, no, he rich. didn't. He got he got he, uh, Trump kicked him out. Of yeah, the I think Trump might maybe. I think maybe Trump disassociated at a certain point. But he, he did hang with him at one point, right? Um, and Ethan, you don't think you don't think that there are convicted, actual convicted pedophiles working right now in Hollywood on major films? I could fucking name them. I name them all the time on my Twitter account. Uh, I mean, yeah, I'm sure there are. This is not. There, there was a convicted uh, pedophile who was just in the uh, Virginia State Senate. He finally got. Uh, I mean, it doesn't like that. That was the whole. A big point I mean, what, of what my is, film. And what is their ethnic is background that, like, in Hollywood, though? What is, <laughs> if you know what I mean. Oh, I mean, there's, 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 a, there's, a, there's a, no, there's a, there's a dang Asian guy who's like one of the biggest, like he's like an award-winning, you know, sound guy. Who's, I mean, it, it spans the gamut. It's not, it's not anything that's ethnically based or whatever. You know, when, when you have a bunch of marbles on the floor that are all different colors, and there's thousands of them. And if you want to find, you know, just the red marbles and then you want to gather up the red marbles and put them in a little corner and then you want to look at just that little corner that's two or three inches, you're going to say, oh, well, the whole all the marbles are red. Look, there's no other marbles. It's because it's what you're focusing on. Well, I'm not saying that nobody else molests kids. Uh, I mean, that's just ridiculous. What I'm saying is um, I don't think it's a secret that that 
it's not the Asians who control Hollywood, Gabe. Uh, you know, it's the, it's the Jews, quite frankly. And that's not... And hey, what's your evidence? Well, I mean, just go look at the heads of the studios and who's traditionally okay, name started them. Hollywood. Name go me. look who started Hollywood. It was Jews. What the fuck? No, 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 I'm, no. No. Today, no, we're talking 2023. Okay. Tell me who. I have to go look up the heads of all these companies? I mean, somebody send me a list in chat. I didn't have, I wasn't prepared for this debate, but uh, I mean, the well, no, fact you, that you're you the one who opened up the you, you're, yeah, well, you're the one who opened up the camera. Do you really arms. deny Maybe the Jews be... run Hollywood? I mean, that's, this is just crazy to me, almost. Like, so you got you got about six big companies that are responsible for about ninety percent of the films made, and they're all big publicly traded companies that are owned by millions of people, millions of shareholders, and pension funds, and you know moms and pops, and you know rich people too, all over the world. So you're saying that the Jews do not have outsized influence in Hollywood, and they didn't literally invent Hollywood. Well, no, those are two different things. You're asking me two different questions. But, but, Ethan, let, let me just put this to you. Um, <laughs> Go ahead. So, when you say outsized, you're probably going off the wrong number. Here's what I mean. Jews are roughly 2% of the country, right? That's about but right, yeah. There, but there's no Jew, There's hardly any Jews in Arkansas or Idaho or, you know, uh, right, Montana. Yeah, I didn't see many Jews where I was from, not too often. No. You know? Well, you're also from, you know, but anyway. But... New I'm York. from Memphis, Tennessee, and there are a few Jews there, but uh, not that many, really. But yeah. But okay. But there aren't many now, here in Mexico. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, go ahead. Well, but New York and New York and L.A. There's a lot of Jews uh, there. Yeah. <laughs> well, right. So if you're so that it's about ten, fifteen percent Jewish in those two places, right? So if you're going to be fair, right, a, t a TV station in Idaho not going to have any Jews working for it, but a place that is located in a place where it's 10 or 15%, then proportional ought to be 10 or 15%, not two. Just simple math, simple statistics, right? Well, not necessarily. I mean, I, I don't really agree with that. The Jews, like I said, they've controlled, they, they created Hollywood, Gabe. Um, I mean, they've controlled it this whole entire time. It's not It's not even a Jewish, it's not an anti-Jewish trope. There's an article right here from the LA Times, who runs Hollywood. Oh, yeah, 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 you know. Well, they literally that, admit. Not... You don't believe that? But, uh, well, Hollywood in 1991 is not Hollywood in 2023. Well, this is from t 2008, actually. But... I mean, there's, there, there's like, there's like, you know, Fox and there's like, you know, Warner Brothers. Just, I mean, there's like six. Now let me read this. Huge... Let me read this to you. How about this? Let me read this to you. How deeply Jewish is Hollywood? No, I just want to read it, though. How deeply Jewish is Hollywood? Question. When the studio chiefs took out a full page ad in the LA Times a few weeks ago to demand the Screen Actors Guild settle the contract, the open letter was signed by News Corp president Peter Chernin, Jewish, Paramount Pictures chairman Brad Gray, Jewish, Walt Disney chief. Robert Iger, Jewish. Sony Pictures Chairman Michael Linton, surprise, Dutch Jew. Warner Brothers Chairman Barry Meyer, Jewish. CBS Chief Corp Les Moonves, so Jewish his great uncle was the first Prime Minister of Israel. MGM Chairman Harry Sloan, Jewish. NBC Universal Chief Executive Jeff Zucker, Jeff Zucker, mega Jewish. That's what the article says, even. Weinstein ran Merrimax for years. Like, I mean, you're almost just, it's just defying reality that you, that you can't even admit that they run. No, Hollywood. but I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm just saying, tell me about what's, tell me about 2023. Um, look, I I, I got to run, but but I would like to set good. up a full debate with you if you're down. I, I don't really. Uh, so do you know what debates. I mean? You know what I mean? You know what I'm a host. You know, I'm just you know, debating because you know there's nobody else here. But go ahead. So so you know you know what you know what I would be down for. What set up Laura Loomer? I I, I would because you you, it, you can be a strong moderator where I'm a good moderator. People get right? one right where people get one and be fair. I'm fair. Where people get one where people get one to two minutes aside. And they don't get to interrupt. And if somebody interrupts a couple times, you'll you'll you know mute them for the one or two minutes. Like you'll keep it fair. 
I can, uh, you know, usually we let it go on my show, but whatever terms the debate participants agree to, I will enforce as the moderator. And I've had positions on certain debates that I've hosted, and I, I don't let that influence my moderation at all. So uh, I am very, I do take that very seriously, actually, yeah. Well, th those those are my terms, and uh, I, I think that Laura Loomer is also somebody who's scared of me. And uh, but I so would, what do you I want to debate, debate Loomer on? on what do you want to debate Loomer on? I know I can get Adam Green. Like, why don't you want to get Adam oh. Green? Oh, uh, Laura Loomer, Trump versus DeSantis. Well, uh, so and and you're DeSantis. Yeah. Well, that seems like a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> and that's an, that's that's another thing, you know. That that I mean, just doesn't make sense about you know Nick Fuentes and all those people. It's like, look, if people have issues with. Jewish stuff or whatever, and it's like he's trying to say that like no Trump and DeSantis are, are the exact same on all that stuff. Like you know, Fuentes is trying to like lie to his audience and tell them that like somehow you know DeSantis is like more than than Trump or Trump is less than DeSantis, and it's completely ridiculous. My idea is you versus Adam Green on Zionist influence in America is actually what I would like to see. Um, um I'm gonna save. I'm. I'm I'm going to save uh, that for Nick Fuentes. Adam Green isn't worth my time. No offense. Wow. Well, Adam Green's named one of the top anti or one of the top anti Semites in the country, actually. Um, and well, and and Nick Fuentes is number is number one. Well, you know Fuentes ain't going to come on this show. I just stabbed him in the back. Why the fuck would he come on the kill show? Well, I'll tell, I mean, I'll, tell, I'll, tell, I'll tell you. I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. You know, Nick Fuentes says he's a millionaire, says he's successful and rich and all that, right? He, he does say Nick that, yeah. people 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 can clip this okay clip it that Nick Fuentes can name his number because he's he's a millionaire he's successful he should be doing things for charity it's you know part of Catholic teaching part of Jewish teaching I'm all for it Nick can pick it whatever charity he wants pick whatever amount he wants thousand two thousand five thousand ten thousand I'll pick child rescue coalition which uh, you know has software that uh, basically has called over two thousand pedophiles in the world put them in jail i donate to them all the time and whatever number nick says to whatever charity he says i'll match that to to child rescue coalition and so a lot of money will get donated to charity and yeah, but if, if nick won't do something nick, nick uh nick will have the opportunity to uh show himself as a charitable person and do something for charity he won't do that man he he won't even come on the kill stream we just busted up his whole operation like why would he come on my show oh he, like, he come he come on anywhere I'll, I'll debate him. I'll, I'll I'll fly to Austin and debate him. I mean, it seems like you're Jones. a little a little skittish to face Adam Green. Like like he to me, he's Adam Green is worth, more of an he's, opponent. He's just, no, he's just not worth my time. I will I will go to Miami and sit there on Fresh and Fit and see that you know little man child face to face. He's the one who's afraid of me, Ethan. He's the one who's he's the one who invited me, who I was just sitting in a Twitter space and minding my own business in December and. He decided he wanted to yell at me, and then even though he controlled the microphone, uh, you know, after about two minutes of, of getting back what he didn't like, he decided he was going to mute me and boot me and kick me out, okay? He can't handle what comes from here. He's never faced anybody like me before. Well, you know, the offer's out there. I don't expect he'll take it. I know he won't come on the kill stream. I maybe could get Loomer. To me, DeSantis is done. I don't even know why you're backing that guy. I mean, what, are you banking on Trump going to prison? Because that's the only way he's going to win. Like, DeSantis is over. Like, that guy. Look, look man. Look, man. I, I, I'm a conservative. And so. Well, I'm not. The candidate I support. Well, I, I know that. So the candidate I, I support as a conservative is I look at I look at all of them and I say, okay, who has the best chance of getting elected and then doing actual conservative things when they're when they're elected and doing what they promise to do? And for me, that's DeSantis. Well, I just you know, the, I mean, you know, the, you know, the it's been a, his campaign's been a joke, though, Gabe. Like, I mean, it's been a, just a complete disaster from day one. Um, who, and he's was, getting beat who, by like 35 points by a guy who's facing like two federal indictments. And he's probably going to get more federal indictments. And they don't even oh. care. They just they're still backing him. Well, uh, you know, this time in 2016, you know, Jeb Bush was in the lead. So we'll see what happens. But you know, so, something something I want to wrap up with real quick, if you don't mind. Um, Go ahead. You know, I have to – I'm just – I'm stunned. 
I, I really am at a personal level just finding out about who this, you know, Britney person from uh, politically provoked <laughs> is, who, who streams on on on. On, 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 on Cozy TV okay. website. No, no, okay, you hit a soft spot. Okay, all right, go ahead. Go ahead and go in on Brittany because I want to hear this because she's well, she's not, Jewish. She's Jewish. Yeah, uh, well, that's 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 where I'm going. That that uh, for, for the life of me. And look, you call people names, and I'm not calling people names. I'm not calling people slurs. I'm just speaking the truth as I see it. That the most important thing to a person is who you are, what you are, your DNA your heritage, that, that that's your blood. And you never, ever, ever betray your own blood no matter what. And I am just dumbfounded that somebody who is Jewish would decide to sell their soul, to listen to hateful super chats all day, to collect money five and $10 at a time, to hear all kinds of stuff, all kinds of hateful stuff. It, it's just, it's one of the most shameful, disgraceful things I've ever seen. I mean, there's a guy who says, look, he wants well, to be Well, Gabe, she'd Ukraine have for. to sell her ass on, on the street if she wasn't doing that. I mean, what else can she do, really? I mean, like... I'm, I'm sure there's a, there's a lot of other... There's nothing worse there? than betraying your ass. I mean, look, I t uh, she's a complete phony. She called for J6 uh, protesters to be shot. The people who and the people who were arrested for January 6th, she told she wanted them to be killed. She was a liberal Jew, is what she was, and now she's transformed just to get super chats. Yeah, you're right about that. I mean, do you think she really believes that though? I mean, uh, to me, she's just a fraud. I, I just can't imagine. She's actually sitting ever. there watching the greatest story never told, and uh, and like talking about the Holocaust numbers and stuff. But I don't believe that she believes any of that. Like she's just doing like, that like, po posture. Yeah, go ahead. Like Ethan, you understand? I mean, anybody who's got half a brain can look up in about two minutes on the internet that like the Nuremberg trials, uh, Adolf Eichmann's trial. There were a number of the guy who ran, um, his name is, is escaping me, but the guy who actually ran Auschwitz, uh, there were a number of high-ranking Nazis who were directly involved with the Holocaust who, look, they lost the war, they hated Jews, they went on trial, they knew they were going to get killed, there was no copping out, there was no, you know, this is not for a plea or something, a plea for mercy, but guess what? They were proud of what they did, and they said what they did. And Adolf Eichmann, you know, he, now he was the concentration camp guy. There were five million in the concentration camps. That's why he said five million. There was another million in what was called the Einstock Gruppen, which was the mobile stuff, which was more in, in Russia where they didn't send them to camps. They just killed them. So that's why it's only five million in the camps and six million total. But anyway, th there were a number of Nazis who just, you know, said like, yeah, this is how many. You know, See, I don't, I don't get into the, I don't get into the numbers of the Holocaust or anything like that because it doesn't affect me, right? I don't think that what happened to the Jews or did or didn't happen, what whatever your opinion is, um, I don't think that that should have any influence on current day American foreign policy. Well, I just uh, my point is that it's just that makes it just so incredibly and unbelievably just uh astounding that somebody with jewish heritage would uh well i mean you know, touch all the it is crazy I, cult, she's you know? crazy i mean i'm not gonna lie it is it is wild um uh, that, that, she, that she does that as a jew uh but i mean she's doing it for money right like i don't even believe the shit she says she just she's just sitting there collecting super chats and i mean she's a whore basically so it is what it is right like i'm saying i've heard you talk about you know you you're, you're here and there your childhood Rest, you know, uh, you know, being a fan of I, I wrestled for real when I was growing up, um, you know, but uh, all through college, actually. But, you know, just that that culture and. You know, family life and who you are and what you are and where you're from and, you know, you're from Memphis, Tennessee. But you know what? If, if you're a Jew, if you're whoever, man, whether you like him, dislike him or whatever, there is nothing that says more about who somebody is than if they are what they are and they stick up for their own fucking kind and there is nothing more fucking disgraceful than betraying your own kind for a guy who would throw you in the oven if he could okay to go out online and simp for a guy who would do you and your family the favor of throwing you in the oven last if he were in charge and that's what she's doing and 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 i just find it disgraceful and with that 
I'll, 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 you well, know, I appreciate I'll you coming on, Gabe, and, and you know, I like I said, I'm used to the moderator here, but I had to, I had to take up, uh, put the gloves on a little bit myself because you know I have my own thoughts on these issues. Uh, but I, you know, I don't hate Jews. I, I don't feel like a. I don't feel like I have to say that, but I will say that anyway. Um, I would like to see you debate somebody like Green. I don't think you necessarily will, but um, I don't know. We'll see if we can set something up. I do appreciate you coming on. I was serious about opening up the kill stream uh, and letting anybody call in, and I know I'm going to catch shit for this. but, uh, <laughs> but You're, you're uh, going to catch shit. Look, I am who I am. I'm going to catch shit, man. You are, you are literally in the business of catching shit, and in fact, the more shit you catch, the better it is for your fucking business. So That's you true. are fucking welcome. That's true. All right, Gabe. Be, be safe out one. there, man. Talk to you soon. Well, maybe. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. All right. That was uh, insane. Thank you for watching this clip. This is the CAC of Remember to like and subscribe.